The greatest question I've ever heard in my life was from Michael Beckwith. And the question is, what's trying to emerge? I love this. Don't overhear this. This is the most profound thing. Imagine if every time something's mm -hmm. showing up in your life, that doesn't feel aligned, that's because something bigger is trying to emerge. Let's say a caterpillar is walking on a stick and then there's a wall and it can't get to its agenda. Okay, the victim caterpillar will just give up, turn around. The motivational achievement caterpillar will climb over it and get over it no matter what. But the what's trying to emerge caterpillar goes, okay, I don't know what this is, but I'm gonna sit here for 11 days. <laughs> and then it becomes a freaking butterfly and it turns out this issue was irrelevant to it. Mm -hmm. And that works with everything. Oh my God, they're talking crap about me. What's trying to emerge for me right now? Oh my God, I'm broke. What's trying to emerge? To really make this question even more powerful, you wanna keep the vague possibility without answering it specifically. But everything in my life, when it feels like I feel stuck, I know a higher me is trying to emerge. Mm -hmm. And so that, that to me is one of the most important, profound, things that the real me doesn't actually have issues with the world. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Kyle C. So welcome to Fire and Soul. Hi, Michelle. I'm so happy to see you. So happy to see you. And it turns out that about a year ago, we probably could have actually seen each other maybe at Air One in Calabasas. Yeah. At Air One. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know. And so I'm here, you are there, but we're both in the now. And it's so exciting. We were chatting about um, a few things before I hit record. And one of those was I had planned a completely different sort of, you know, trajectory, just a blueprint of where we might go. And then I heard a video that you uh, dropped this morning everywhere uh, called God's Kid. And so we're going to drop in there in a few moments. But for anyone who is listening to the Fire and Soul who may not be uh, as familiar with you as I am, how about a little bit of, of, of your backstory? There's so much to share. And I'd like to know what you feel like you'd like to share. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit will be about what's here now. I mean, I'm happy to share. I'm totally happy to share my story. It's just like what's here now is even more profound. Like go for, that. Then go for, with it. for everyone watching, like no matter how big your story is from the past, victim or achiever or whatever else, <clears throat> the now is even more profound. It's more what you are. And, uh, but I mean, still to, to give context, just a couple quick things. I was a stand up comic for 20 to 25 years. I started when I was 12. I guess really started stopping around 32, did a few gigs after that, but so 20 years. And one of the things that I think was a principle in the comedy world that I didn't realize was happening is the constant belief of when something happens, I'll be happy. Every one of us, the comics would always be when I finally get to perform at this festival, when I get this late night show, when I get to perform at colleges or headline this club, you know, whatever, when I book this movie and everyone watching knows that there's a belief that we all have even this second, you can think, when this happens, I'll be happy when I make that money, when I get over this addiction, when I get the divorce or get married or whatever. And <clears throat> it, it constantly creates the belief that there's lack because it's over here. Like it, what it implies is that's the answer and this isn't. So every time we want something, we're escaping the now and saying it's over there. And in comedy, I noticed that I would get a lot of the things that I want and be more enslaved to it, more stuck to it, more it better not fall apart now because it's the answer to my life. And just really notice that humanity has a big pattern of when something happens, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. And the shift that started for me was the shift from that to the revelation of it's actually when I'm happy, things will happen. And by happy, I mean, fine with what I feel like really like, okay with anger. Okay. With shame. Okay. With guilt. Okay. With sadness. Okay. With whatever's there. And I was weirdly talking to someone yesterday and they said, I, I have all these feelings come up and I'm trying to get to peace. And I said, don't try to get to peace because your idea of peace is an escape from this and it's control instead of getting to peace, get to now, meaning like you're here and pay attention to what the feelings are versus shutting them up and getting somewhere else. So I started the process of being more fascinated by observing my basically inner software and how it's 
always going when something happens, I'll be happy. And then the process of me getting it and being like, now it better not happen. It better not leave, better not leave my life, better not. I need more of it. And just noticing how we're insane, like how human humanity is full of people that are over there is better. And then when they get it, it's really fear that starts to show up. Mm -hmm. So the shift for me was to start to notice these patterns and just get really present. So through meditation, through a major process of letting go, mm -hmm. I started through massive letting go. I, I stopped moving from the world of motivation mm -hmm. and noticed that our body is carrying a bunch of patterns and a bunch of addictive things. And then we do addictive things to keep the patterns on our body, like a heavy vest. And so we keep eating the wrong food or staying in bad connections and staying in bad jobs and doing all these things that aren't our true self. Mm -hmm. And I started getting more fascinated with just letting go of the things in my life, whether they were an addiction, whether they were um, an old way of being and noticing this kind of miraculous other side to those letting goes. Mm -hmm. So one one time I was going 90 days raw vegan, and this isn't about veganism as much as it's about um, me letting go of the me that only ate a certain way, that got love from restaurants. Me going raw vegan was the beginning of like, okay, the, the energy of bad fried food is falling off of you. And then it was like, no Facebook for a while. And all the ego kicks in with, well, then you, you won't have a way to market, whatever. And then one day I was doing this with my friend Diego and he said, the only reason, you know, we're going through stress is your mind can only measure what you will lose. Mm. It can't see what you will gain. Mm. So everything in my life that started feeling like it's not a 10, it's not an expansive heart connection. I would start to let go of it. And then miracles would happen on the other side every time. <laughs> so I started getting, oh, when you're letting go of a relationship, you're focused on the loss of this versus the gain of what you will be or the better relationship. Are you free of this? And every time you feel something's not truly your soul's alignment, mm. if you don't let go of it, you're actually trying to stay out of your soul's alignment. And I've noticed that in the process of letting go, starting in 2010, everything I could that wasn't in alignment, um, I found a deeper connection to myself. I would cry out energetic trauma patterns that were there. Mm -hmm. And weirdly, it started making me leave the comedy world. Like the higher me would start to see that my at one point dream career was now heavy. Mm -hmm. And I started noticing like my connection to myself was becoming more and more the priority over getting a circumstance locked, making money, whatever. And bizarrely, the career and the circumstances and everything else started mirroring my connection to myself. Mm. Instead of me staying the old story and trying to change the circumstances, I'm, I'm figuring out what I am. And my intention really, especially in the last few years, has been to find out what I truly am. And I'm, I'm aware that that is more even powerful than figuring out what I can do. Yes. Do you get what I mean by that? Yes. Yes. Cause the doing mirrors that like we are so associated, like so many people, when you, even when they meditate, they start saying, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And we're so wired that your love for what you do, that you're worthy for what you do. Mm -hmm that you matter for what you do. And I, I believe part of the shift that's trying to happen on the planet now is the revelation that you're loved, period. There's no way out of it. Mm. And I find that when I'm really connected to what I am as a byproduct, doing happens more, but I'm not associating more happiness or less happiness to if I accomplish a specific external goal. And my real real intention is just more and more working on knowing what I truly am. Mm. And boy, does the world mirror that like the abundance that I truly am versus the proving it on the external. So whatever a, a cynical mom in my childhood sees that I'm legit or something, yes. a different planet than me in this work. So <clears throat> my career shifted 
to merging comedy and transformation. And in 2010, I started Evolving Out Loud, which was the company that I formed. And we started doing way bigger theaters. I do two day events, six day events. Everything's off the cuff. Not one word is planned. Nothing's planned. And notice that in finding what I truly am, I let go of all these egoic constructs that think I'm some unworthy person that needs to fix it, whatever. Eventually, it's just God talking through and uh, the events start to be 1400 seaters. We did a two day event at the Dolby Theater where they do the Oscars, 3400 people. And the more I don't work on trying to fill seats, but instead become what I am yes everything grows and mirrors that and it, there's a match to how abundant you are as a being and so yeah so I spent 2010 to 2020 working on this kind of move towards the higher and let go of the lower and then 2020 was the beginning of the moving from a vibration based world to oneness Mm. huge difference mm. like all the content of get into the vortex and don't bring the dark stuff in and all that stuff well our body's still carrying a lot of dark energy right so when we're only associating love to the positive and don't look at the negative it's like it's like having an attic that has dead bodies in it and we're just closing the door and just we're gonna the secret this and just positive everything and not look at <laughs> but the now goes god says i see all Yes. And everything that's in the attic of your soul can come to light and be alchemized. And so in the last three years, I've been fascinated by bringing love to the energies in our body that feel unworthy and not trying to get them worthy, but letting them know, I love you, even if you're unworthy. Yes. I love you if you're lost. I love you if you're abandoned. I love you if you, and it has been the most alchemizing, miraculous time mm -hmm. And I think that the world is waiting for that too. I think old self-help has an aspect of think positive. And a lot of times we create businesses out of our, our fix to that we were bullied or that a parent said, but then that pain is what's building the business, right? Yes. Or, yeah. I just heard so, you talk about that with Tim Ballard on his podcast. This yes. exactly, when he's like, dig into me, dig into me for the second time. And that's exactly where you guys went. It was like, all of this drive is from the five-year-old, right? That was bullied. Yeah. And right. we all can identify with, I literally sat with that last night as I was preparing for today. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so rich and deep. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is because mm -hmm. like, I, I I think the way that I saw it was like 2020, no matter what you feel about it politically or what it is or what the agenda is, if I look at it from a different perspective, like just, I'm not a fan of lockdowns or masks or anything like that, but what if God was just scrambling all of our patterns? Meaning like <laughs> up until 2020, you might've had a decent enough relationship or a job or the ability to just escape at a restaurant or travel to, to not have to really go within you. It's like, we're all water skiing above the ocean of our soul. Mm. And then 2020 happens and breaks all your patterns. And all of a sudden we have a two year meditation retreat. And when you're at the store, you're not talking to people as much because we're all masked up. And it's almost like the downside is this bizarre thing we were going through, but the upside was like, we're hearing deeper in our soul yeah. where we're, we're where we stop giving our authority to everything outside of us, like to what people think of you, to the media, to the government. And then we're, we're now really stuck going more and more inward mm -hmm. and finding a level of God that's beyond any, whatever dogmatic way or any controlled way, anything. It's like, we're just directly connecting to God. What's the, what happens when you do that? Well, you start to learn the darkness that exists in your body and the darkness that exists in the world. Mm -hmm. We're starting to learn who the government really is. We're starting to, these are the same politicians as in the eighties, just no one talked about trafficking or no one talked about, you know, Epstein yeah. Island, all these different things that were there. So I basically see like love is bringing up to the light, yeah. the stuff that's in the, the deep in the attic. Yeah. 
because that's the only way we can move forward because everything that's buried under your house that's dead is going to eventually stink. Yeah. And there's a reason that it decays and stinks and becomes obvious that it's there. It's like everything that's buried has to come to light. Yeah. And that's the only way we're going to have a healed planet. And so a lot of times people create ambition and achievement as the solution to what they're burying, but that's still being buried. And life is making our ability to escape through achievement and everything else impossible. And that's why a lot of times setting goals doesn't work anymore. Right. right. You know what I mean? Because it's all to not feel unwanted or whatever. Oh, totally. I get I it so, so much deeply. there. But... Oh, I love that. Thank you. It, we just dropped right into the deep into the pool, which I knew we would do. And I'm so grateful for it. So you are safe to go that deep and more so here, <laughs> just sure. so you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what you were just sharing sort of in summary for me reminds me of a really important lesson that I got from a spiritual teacher I was working with in the past few years who uh, really shed light on, you know, that which we are running toward the goal, the dream, the outcome is often because we think it will relieve us from the pain and suffering of that which we are running from. So it's mm -hmm. the same principle. And so being able to be with it all and not just be with it all, but to love it all, to embrace it all, to allow it all. I don't even like to use the term accept anymore because it just has a different vibrational tone than allowing for it all. And then, and then we go into that oneness. We are in the totality of who we actually be. Mm -hmm. And so, so that for me just feels so deeply resonant. Thank you for that. Sure. There was a lot that was shared. Um, but what wants to come through right now is because you spoke to it on, on some high level, when did you begin to notice that the government wasn't what the government is presented oh. as. Because you had your your spiritual awakening began, it sounds like in 2010. Yeah. Maybe you didn't know it was that, but this inner awakening, right? Of like, this isn't quite it. What yeah. a gift to get it that long ago. And to have so much quote at stake, ego at stake, right? Yeah. Will I lose everything? But you were so devoted to listening. And that is why... I mean, it's just a divine magnet for abundance, right? Because you're living in truth with your soul's your soul's being. But when did you begin to awaken to, ooh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's also going on in the world of oneness? It's really interesting. That's a really interesting question. I remember a combination of things would be around 2004, 2005, there were a couple of aspects that changed stuff. At first I had like anxiety that was so big. I was suicidal in 2004. I had this fear that I would faint on stage and that fear is like that it would ruin my career and that I would be nothing. And I guess the basis of the fear was the belief that who I am is what I do and that mm -hmm. I'm this comic. And But this fear was enough to put me either on the edge of suicide or starting self-help. So I went to a hospital to go get anxiety pills. And I'm so lucky that they took too long. I went to Kaiser Permanente. I was like, going to go get anxiety pills. And they took 45 minutes. So I heard this voice in me go get up and get out. And I left the place in the waiting room and just instead went to borders and, and I got a book and it was a Tony Robbins book. And that was the beginning of the whole thing. And I, I read Awaken the Giant Within or it was an audio book, I heard Awaken the Giant Within and started changing my thinking, mm -hmm. which was the first moment in my life of a little bit of leaving the matrix because you start to get how much power you have and you start to think, why doesn't anyone know this? Mm -hmm. Around that same time, I saw, <laughs> I've never talked about this, but I saw a documentary on 9-11 and something that made me question mm -hmm. the narrative a little bit and start to look at things differently. And I I guess I'm fine with just being called a conspiracy theorist, but a lot didn't make sense there. Mm -hmm. And I remembered back then, it was like, it's so interesting to me that my opening internally was matched around the exact same time as the opening of the world isn't what I thought. It almost feels like it mirrors your revelation with yourself. It's almost like to me, like, the second I started seeing there's more power in here and the truth of what I am, why doesn't everyone know this? It's bizarre because around that same time, I'm seeing there's no way that could have been what they said. There's That doesn't make sense scientifically. You know, there's just so many things that if you open up and you get interested, 
and you you really seek and I'm sure not saying any specific thing that I know happened or anything because there could have been skewed in that but Mm -hmm. you just start to go that doesn't make sense that doesn't make sense and you start to see the elements of control it's weird also that the matrix came out in 99 Mm -hmm. literally came out the same day as a movie I did called 10 things I hate about you Mm -hmm. and like Mm -hmm. it's like everything was like the for those five years the beginning of like reality isn't what you think it is and you just really see that I think now there's two types of people there are people that are seeking the truth and people that are running from the truth Mm -hmm. because to see the truth implies everything you've known is is not what you know right Mm -hmm. like every single thing to see the truth implies all of my reality isn't what I thought. And I have no tangible thing to even grab onto as what's true. And it is a very scary thing. Mm -hmm. So people maybe grab onto some type of past accomplishment, uh, you know, an identity of I'm a victim to my parents, whatever it is. And I believe you can either go down with a bunch of addictions as you protect the lie that you're not. Mm -hmm. And that was me for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you, you, you like turn the world into a giant operating table and you get here and you go pull this lie out of my body, pull alchemize, Mm -hmm. whatever that I was Mm -hmm. shamed or, or beaten or alchemize that I wasn't like every, like I get to live a life where I get really present. I meditate two to four hours a day. Mm -hmm. And then I see lies in my body leave. I feel like I'm reversing the aging in my body because it's like, it's, it's purging old software that doesn't serve me anymore. And Mm. those patterns were needed, you know, Mm. at one point, but they're not now because as you go inward, you really find the truth of what you are. You don't need them anymore. I realize that as I, every time I'm done talking, I'm like, man, I'm talking a lot today. Yeah. Which I love it by the way. It's what you do. It's why you're here and that's how you serve. So thank you for for talking and sharing what's on your your heart. Yeah, there's so much in there. One of the things that really stood out to me because I didn't know that about your sort of origin, just cracking through like the veil, right? Of it it being a Tony Robbins book on audio. For me, it was going to date with destiny in 2017. It was like, I came in one way with all these goals and dreams and very clear, right? Of exactly what I wanted. Um, And then by day four, it was like, You know, it was like my entire life changed. I was on TV forever. And that was the ultimate of, you know, and what I was shown at Date with Destiny is that's how I deemed myself worthy and that I would get love, all the things that you know, right? But it was shocking to me. It was like, what? And here I thought I was so self-aware, like raised on a steady diet of self-development. Reverend Michael Beckwith was my minister for 18 years. I ran different ministries inside Agape, you know? Really? And so, yes, I did. I I, there a ton? I I know, and we never connected. We did- um, I'm there next week, actually. Really? Oh, yeah, cool. I mean, not. Spe- I'm doing his podcast, but. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I know yeah. that you guys are our friends. I know the favorite thing that he says that you love so much, which uh, instead of me saying it, you want to share it? Sure. The greatest question I've ever heard in my life was from Michael Beckwith. And the question is, what's trying to emerge? Oh, I love that. This, this is the, the like, the, don't, if you're watching this, don't overhear this. This is the most profound thing. Imagine if every time something's showing up in your life that doesn't feel aligned, that's mm-hmm. because something bigger is trying to emerge. Yeah. So on an obvious measurable scale, let's see a, let's say a caterpillar is walking on a stick and then there's a wall and it can't get to its agenda. Okay. The victim caterpillar will just give up, turn around the motivational achievement caterpillar will climb over it and get over it no matter what. But the what's trying to emerge caterpillar goes, okay, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to sit here for 11 days. <laughs> and then it becomes a freaking butterfly. And it turns out this issue was irrelevant to it. Mm-hmm. And that works with everything. Oh my God, they're talking crap about me. What's trying to emerge for me right now? Oh my God, I'm broke. What's trying to emerge? Oh, the me that is patient, the me that's created. And you and to to really make this question even more powerful, you don't you want to keep the vague possibility without answering it specifically. Yes. Other than kind of like vague like compassion or patience, those are fine. But everything in my life when it feels like I feel stuck, I know 
a higher me is trying to emerge. Mm -hmm. And so that, that to me is one of the most important, profound things that the real me doesn't actually have issues with the world. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Because the real you knows that you've come here, schoolroom earth, right? Yes. To, uh, to, to remember who you are and to learn whatever you needed to learn because you were excited to evolve out loud. Yes. And, uh, and specifically in this time, you know, I mean, it's an interesting thing for me as I've been learning more how to embody oneness, like even looking at why can't they see it? Hi, dad. Why can't you see it? I sent you all this stuff, right? Um, you wanted to see it. You raised me to be aware. Uh, and at the same time, I'm like, oh, I get it. Like, that's his contract. And so I can honor that and include all of that in my own experience of oneness. And so that's really helped me. And what's emerging is, ah, so much more expansion and possibility and miracles, right? Like beyond the known now or the known past, you know, it's like just surrendering fully to this moment, trusting that we're held, trusting that where everything is in divine order. This is an art though. And, and it, it is an, asqu- and it's an acquired uh, way of being really. I don't want to say skill because that's, that's sort of old paradigm thinking. Um, I want to pivot back though, because yes. you're sharing so beautifully about your awakening. Yes. When did you start sharing about what you were seeing in terms of the matrix? Because that's been very loud and clear. And it's what helped me so much. And I'll share about that in a moment because I really want to honor you and who you've been to me. But yeah, when did you start sharing? And were you scared to share what would happen in my business? Would I be kicked off the platforms? Well, you know, I've been lucky in that a part (laughs) of me has been absolutely oblivious to that people would think that's nuts until way later. Like when I had my Tony Robbins shift, I wouldn't shut up. And I told every comic and every person about it. And I'm like, it's, it's amazing. Like you got to go. And then everyone's like, Kyle's like a cult guy now. And but <laughs> I almost killed myself and then had a number one comedy central special. Thanks to what I had learned from that. And so I was just like, no, everyone's there's like gold here. And I just was nuts to people, but then I uh, get it. You know, <laughs> same, and, same, and same. Like, oh my God. You got to know this. Everyone. everyone. I mean, it was yeah. like worse than even the past three years for me. It was like, you have to go. Your life right. will change. Yeah. It was, is amazing. Just, I bow down for that season of my life evolved past yeah. it at this point, but so grateful for those rooms. Like, I get totally. it. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And, and then in 2010 was really the biggest shift for me was, was, really it was it was so imagine like michael beckwith has a book called life visioning and it talks about four stages Mm -hmm. so to me by me through me as me to me is you're a victim of everything it all happens to me it's because of my mom my ex and when you when this wears out you're either suicidal you become addicted or you figure out what caused it and you go to a next stage of a motivational stage this is that was 2004 for me the tony robbins yep. make it happen this is all run by me i can have the number one comedy central special i can build buildings i can whatever my and, will <laughs> yeah yes, totally. yes. and there's an egoic will that's going to make it happen and there's a reason that his he fills stadiums is because most of the public's in the first one yes. so so when you start to get to three which is more like beckwith to me wayne dyer esther hicks mm-hmm. that's that's through me that's where you're making decisions based on vibration not push motivation right yes. so okay i'm going to go to a higher frequency and i can see that this feels heavy, so I let go of it. And you start to get the world mirroring that. Yes. This I don't know if this will make sense, but you can only do the level that you're supposed to do next. In other words, yes. you, it's very hard to be, you have your body blown open to level four and do anything in level two. Exactly. <laughs> it's a, it, there's a graduating process on, on divine assignment. Yes. Right. In fact, most people at level two that are like trying to get there, they're like, how do I get to four? And it's like, <laughs> you're being two trying to get to four, but four is the the dissolving of two and three. Yeah. My and- favorite is when they think they're at the four and it's really just a hijacking, right? Because lower yeah. self ego is so sneakster. Yes. And, but when you've gotten to a three and or blips of four, you recognize that in others and not to judge it, but it's like, oh, not for me. Right. Or at yeah. least not anymore. Yeah. Cause I can, I'm like, I relate, I identify. You can only truly identify when you know it. 
Yes. And yeah. you know what I think? I think that I think that there's quite a bit of people on the planet whose body has blown open to four, but they don't know that. So they like live in two. And this gap is where so much depression and suicidal thoughts are. Yes. It's that like you you keep trying to use the programs, but you're you're past that. Like, in other words, if you're a high school senior, but you're taking third grade over and over again, that gap is going to make you really depressed because you're not you're not at your thing. So, you know, if you're a butterfly and you're hanging out with caterpillars all day, you can only go at the pace of the caterpillar, but it's the most pain to the butterfly because they unconsciously get there's more, but they keep living in the less. And our biggest pain is we don't move based on where we are, you know, and there's a lot of people who are trying to do old tactics and techniques while the consciousness is is actually farther than that. Yeah. So so the third one is this vibrational thing Michael Beckwith would call through me, and I'm kind of giving my own interpretation of it. And then the fourth one is as me, which is where you get this whole thing is you. Mm. And you're talking to yourself right now. There's mm-hmm. literally zero separation. Yeah. And, and as me, I think, holds much bigger space for all that is and can alchemize what you used to think of as the lower frequencies and is 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 being replaced by a merging and a oneness with god that mm. actually is more where your identity is than i'm the small separate self that does what god says like it's much more of a oneness with that energy and a complete leaving of those worlds can exist within that but you got to be with where you are basically. So totally. It's almost like looking at it as it's, it's a real integration for authentic embodiment. Right. And, and that is a process that requires patience and grace and trust. It's an active state of surrender to merge my will, which is, I work so hard to know how to overcome limiting belief. Yeah. Right with thy will, with divine will. Mm. And so like most of my friends, even still, they're like scared to death, like go through that sort of metamorphosis the caterpillar goes through, right? Because they watched me and then they saw it, but now it's on the other side of like, I'm in in an almost constant state of euphoric bliss. You know, it doesn't mean that I don't, I'm not living in the real world and 3D issues, but they don't, they don't impact me the same way, you know? And so, and I no longer wish to awaken anyone you know it's like i mean yes it's technically on my website and things like that but that's just because labels and titles are impossible these days wouldn't you agree it's like (laughs) what do i do i don't know it's like who i am right now this is this is what i do (laughs) well if you imagine that the universe is mirroring you yeah okay and then you're going i wish everyone would wake up yeah the world mirrors your codependence on everyone waking up so it'll keep you weak right And our shift is where it's like, God's talking to you. It's not about you getting everyone to get something. In fact, the amount of revelations I've had lately, and I would be about to post something about it or make a video and God will be like, the higher be like, you need to show me this about you versus you getting seen for this revelation. Mm. And it'll be like, can you just go inward and you live this and not share it? Like, can you... And, and it sounds people might hear that and be like, no, you need to share your gift or whatever. I get it. But there's a level past that. The, I got to get my voice out world. That has a shadow to it too. And that's that I have a lot of clients that feel bad. They didn't get their voice out enough and they're going to die with their music left in them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, God isn't like this warden that you better get it out or you're not enough. And you you know, when you just get like, instead of getting your voice out, could you also just hear it? Like hear the voice inside directly versus you're not free till it's, till it's said to everyone else. And as someone who's been on stage for 33 years of my life, Mm. learning God's going, I'm just talking to you. Would you alchemize this and not extrovert every single thing (laughs) ever, you know, and I can feel, I'll feel stuff come up, then I'll cry it out. Then I'll notice everyone around me suddenly feels freer. Yes, yes, that's the oneness vibration, actually. Right. Um, beautifully said. Thank you for that. Yeah, you know, your honesty, uh, and it's something that I really resonate with and I and I relate with. And it's like even I look at my social media and I'm like, who is that still? Right. Because it's like so much of the old, um, but yet 
I know I like my best thing is just to show up and just share on video. It's where I'm comfortable. I have, you know, thousands of hours of live TV experience, which is an interesting niche. So I trust in that transmission, right? Just to download. But even that I'm like, but I don't, it's not, it's for me. This is for me. And so what I've come to at least know for now, where I am currently is if I just share from my most authentic state, which is in the now, and and that vibration will do the job that any perfectly curated copy or a video, it's like, that is just not it. But yet it's still not quite on social, right? Because it's this, this evolution that I'm just kind of in awareness of, and it's really cool to watch it all just unfold. And I know you get it. Yeah. Um, back to the, when did you though start sharing about the matrix? Because you helped me and I know infinitely more lives when the lockdowns were going down and the fact that you were in LA and I was in LA, I was like, I had something to hold on to, Kyle. I didn't, yeah. I, I I had heard about you, obviously, but I had never been to an event. I had never, you know, joined one of your programs. I wasn't subscribed to your YouTube channel, but when it was time, it was time. I don't even know how it came into the peripheral, but God is so beautiful, right? And I, and all of a sudden I was devouring your videos in September, October, November, and then since of 21. So it was pretty late into the sort of lockdown time, uh, but it was soul food for me. I mean, it gave me hope. It gave me possibility. It gave me a level of consciousness that I'll be honest. And my listeners know, cause I've talked about you so many times when I would first watch your videos, cause I gave up TV and alcohol and everything like all in the same day, right? When I was looked like a psychotic break, but it in fact was cause I was letting go of the mind and ego on so many levels. And so I'd see the tab for, for YouTube, you know, like the little devil, like Netflix, Netflix, it's not TV. And I was like, no, go learn from Kyle. Go learn from Kyle oh. right now. That was so, so profound for me. And, and I remember watching your videos for the first few months. And I was like, what is he even saying? Mm. It was either boring, right, to the egoic mind or it was too complex, also egoic mind, but I didn't give up and I'm getting the full body divine tingles right now. I did not give up higher self knew. And so it was like then before I knew it, and it took a long time, time, it's all, what does it even mean? But months and months later, I started to notice that I was actually saying out loud in the groups that I run some of the things that I heard you say, but days later. Mm. And I was like, oh my gosh, are we connected to the same cloud? Are we downloading, right? So it was just this beautiful gift to me to show me that I was in fact evolving out loud as well. Wow. And so I want to just thank you for giving me like a lighthouse in the darkest time, suicide ideation for sure. What's going to happen to my business? Am I going to make it? Will I be hunted down and killed in LA, right? There was all that fear running so many uh-huh. of us at that time. And now to be here full circle, almost exactly two years later, and to be in a conversation with you, sharing heart to heart, it's just, it's not lost on me that this is what's possible when we just are willing to let go of what is enslaving us. Yes. Yeah. Everything you let go of will be replaced by something. Yeah. There's there's nothing that isn't replaced by something. And when you let go of something external and then the energy that kept it dies too. Yes. Yes. More God. And it's replaced with higher level ideas and it's replaced with more worthiness and it's replaced with, with massive abundance and and Mm -hmm. ways that money and relationships and everything's trying to come into your life. That is so much more profound than what you could egoically achieve, which you only want to do because you're starting from that you're in lack in the first place. Instead of doing fixes from keeping the the small story, let them be alchemized and let yourself die to yourself over. And I mean, that's that's what ayahuasca does. It's it's like I'm going to kill what you think is the real you, but I'm actually going to liberate you from a pattern or several patterns that you just created to not feel trauma again. Mm. And we identify as that and you're, we're wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that if you were hit as a kid, you might create a pattern of like, okay, achieve, achieve, achieve. And then I'm not hit. Yeah. Right. And then you go, I'm an achiever. It's like, no, that's a pattern you created. And we're still, we have a box inside with don't hit me running the show. Yes. And totally. all of us have that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, me, don't shame me. Don't hit me. All is inside. Protect, preserve, protect. Right. And right. Um, yeah, 
And then we wonder why we're so heavily addicted, right? And need the stimulus, even that dopamine hit of like, you know, another like, another comment or whatever on social. Mm -hmm. um, it's so beautiful just to take the mask off and to be willing just to be raw, wide open and be like, this is me. It ain't perfect. And guess what? What I've noticed in my business, because it was very perfected at all the fancy mask, you know, a few years back and very proud of that. Didn't even realize what was driving all of it, right? The anxiety on the deepest levels, the mall, almost just almost imperceptible, except when you really listen and you attune, you're like, oh my gosh, it's completely running everything, mm. right? And then you begin to just be with it, allow it, and then it just dissolves into actually an energy that can work for you and on your behalf for the highest and best for all. Yeah. This has been my experience. But you yeah. just said ayahuasca. That was the second stage of my awakening. Have you tried ayahuasca? Maybe I'm unfamiliar okay. with that story. That's okay. Oh. okay. Rhythmia many times. That's where I did it. it. Okay. I, did it. I didn't yeah. realize that. Okay. I've had yeah. Dr. Jeff. I've had Jerry on the show. Like, yes. yeah, like that was profound for me in 2019. Okay, cool. Before we move into God's kid, because I, I know we're kind of beginning to arc into the last third of this conversation. It's been so fun and, and just amazing to connect with you, Kyle. Oh, fluid. Um, great. <laughs> um, would, would you uh, like to expand on some of the key insights? Uh, that happened for you as a result of deepening into your relationship with uh, the sacred medicine of ayahuasca? Oh my God. I mean, I've, <laughs> had, I've, yes. I've had so many crazy experiences. I mean, here's a couple. I remember one time taking it, being two hours in and being like, I don't think it's doing anything. And then at one point thinking I'm about to die, like I started feeling my heart feel weird. And then my throat close up. And I was like, I feel like I'm going to die. And I forgot I was even on ayahuasca. I was just like, I'm going to die. And then I I was lying down. I closed my eyes and it goes, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And then I felt it freaking die and saw this white light come out of that panicky guy and leave. And suddenly I was like the box he was inside of. It's like I switched from being that energy. That's like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. It was me being it. And then it like mm. shifted me to being the space. And I saw this beam come and take him away. <laughs> Some panicky guy that's worried he's going to die pulled out of my body. Mm. Um, I remember one time I had a major attachment to a girl that was an ex of mine. We broke up in 2012, but we stayed really good friends for years. And when I would, we'd stay good friends, but I actually felt even though we were broken up, that if I move forward, I could feel it would feel abandoning to her. So I felt kind of stuck and there were, I wanted to move forward in relationships and I wasn't with her, but I felt like kind of in this limbo-y place. Mm -hmm. I did ayahuasca one time in that state. And when I got really nauseous, cause you often throw up when I got really nauseous, I saw her face swimming in my stomach. And then when I throw up, I threw her up yeah. <laughs> and I saw her come out of my mouth and then her flap around the bucket. And I was suddenly completely over my fear of abandoning her and some vague attachment. And she was free too. like the next day, she and I talked and she was like ready to move forward and wanted to date some new guy. And I was the weirdest thing because I was like stuck to her. And then we, it, it killed that addiction. And mm. like, mm. and so mm. I've had many, many different experiences. I think it brings up what your subconscious is really scared will happen and makes you face it and see it and see that it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes it'll give you higher calling. Sometimes it'll just change everything for you. It's just like, it's crazy. I also find in meditating all day, not, not all day, but like a couple hours a day, uh, it, it lives in that realm. Like I'm, it, yes. it's, you know what I mean? Like, yes. I feel like it's just as profound to listen to silence a couple hours a day and does the same work, if not more than ayahuasca does. You know, all my subconscious yeah. patterns come up when I when I'm meditating. If I follow what it says and and don't fill them with some type of addiction, uh, they die. Yeah, you know, beautifully I'll said. Feel them them cry out if I don't feed them. Like if the part of me that feels unloved without food doesn't go eat right away and doesn't go to a Mexican place to like feel loved, then it egoically comes up more. It gets louder, and then it's like a a person drowning. It's it's dying, but it's louder, but it falls off. 
Mm, so. so well said. Thank you for that. Yeah, I love what they say at Rhythmia too, right? What's coming is going. And yes. so it's like just to allow for like I I'm literally imagining being on all fours and rocking and 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 also I got to a level of of my experience with ayahuasca of do I need to purge or is this more of an integration opportunity, right? Yes. And so getting that discernment of like, no, this is not to just immediately just purge because I'm very comfortable with that. I didn't gross out by that either. And it's like, okay, great. If it's coming, it's going. But um, to make that, to have that discernment of sit with this, be with this, don't try to get rid of this. This is the real lesson. That was, that was really profound for me. And now, so the last time I, I sat with the medicine was spring of 22, so about a year and a half ago. But I replaced my television with a beautiful altar, you know, and and so my altars in my living room, I live alone with a bunch of animals, you know, and so um, but now I'm taking on shamanic journeys with zero external catalyst. And I've got an image of me and my mother actually flanking the main uh, shaman Mitra over at, uh, you know, Rhythmia. And sometimes I will literally be taken into what feels like a complete shamanic journey. Yes. And it's just for cleaning and clearing and then ultimately communing. And so sometimes when I'm back into the altar, it'll just be tears, just cleansing, cleansing. And I'm like, wow, I had no idea that was way down there, that little root. Yes. You know? And yes. then the freedom, the liberation, the joy, the love that I'm like, ah, and there's no one to talk to about that. I'm sharing it with you here, but it's like, that's all me and my divine alignment. Yes. So for me, that devotion, not two, three hours a day of meditation, but that sacred silence to listen to tells me everything I need to know. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. Um, you I... mentioned God's kid this morning. And, and I'm so with you on that in ways that I'll share maybe um, after you share, but what I wanted to get to, and it's so beautiful how this conversation unfolded, because I was like, yes, Kyle, yes, yes, I'm so with you. And that's very advanced, right? That mm -hmm. We could be skipping a few steps, Kyle, um, if we go right to that, because the alchemizing, the integrating of even past lives and our parents' karma, right, and what we were born into by design is an important step, but that's what you're talking, you've already, you've already laid the framework down. So yeah. now we're just graduating, deepening, expanding, however we want to look at this, evolving into this next insight, which is what you shared this morning. And I'm going to encourage everyone, and I'll link it in the show notes to go and watch this video and then maybe even attend your event in November that you had that you're like, everything's changing from here. But before I steal any of your, any more of your thunder, can you share what's come through? Because it's really rich. Well... So a couple of days ago, you know, I do listen to silence an hour, two, three a day. And like, it's a big choice when it's nighttime and I could go out with someone or hang out, <laughs> or whatever. And I just go, I'm going to sit on the bed and close my eyes and listen. Okay. It's always full of miracles. And I notice that when I rack them or do them from a long time, it really starts to add up. You, yep. you start to really get insights. And there was an insight I have that I think in one way could be a known thing or an I, an, an, but there was a way that it tangibly hit that was so big for me. Mm -hmm. And I was meditating and this, this higher energy said, I need you to get your, your, my kid. And you need to stop thinking at all of yourself as your parents' kid. Mm -hmm. And, and I understand that we grew up with our parents and what we don't understand is our parents have major egos because they came from a more unconscious time and probably aren't doing any of this work. And they come from parents with bigger egos from a more unconscious time. The time ex expands and it's evolving in now, which is really exciting because we're, we're being forced into a higher dimension, mm -hmm. but you weren't even raised by your parents. You were raised by your parents' egos and what they were conditioned to be. And we often have blame. Like I'm like this because my dad wasn't there or my mom said this about me or whatever. And every time we do that, we're implying that what we are, are those parents' kids mm -hmm. and you're not, mm -hmm. you're God's kid. And when you understand you're God's kid, you undo yourself from the limitations that you learned that you are. You undo yourself from your rejection of your parents. Like if you're like, I'm not going to be like my dad, you're still grabbing your dad and trying to be the opposite. So you're still grabbing this thing. Mm -hmm. And I kind of see 
our parents and what they are as like old software, like Windows 95. <laughs> it's their parents. So it's like for them, it's like Windows 1952 or something. Right, right. Right. And so y- any computer with Windows 95 wouldn't work now. It would, in fact, it would probably get some type of virus or sick because it's holding old things that don't actually serve it. And if you think you're Windows 95 versus you're the thing that upgrades the computers, you're the constant upgrade energy. You're not even the computer. You're the thing that upgrades it, right? You start to move past these boundaries that you thought you had because those were your parents, so to give you a good, a great example is that my mom was always very often scared that I or my brother would get physically hurt. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't let me play high school football. I wore a bike helmet when I drove a sea doo on the lake. I, you know, she was worried that, you know, a terrorist attack would take the plane on the field trip down, like when, I, you know, everything. A lot and, of fear. Yeah. A lot of and understandable, and I sure appreciate her protecting me. Mm-hmm. But what she said to me was the word, and I often was scared of getting hurt all the time. Like it was just in my body. And I really, really this year got into jujitsu. Mm-hmm. And I, I went through the me that stored all the cells of my mom's fear and thought, this is not like me to do. Mm -hmm. And I went through being through a ton of chokeholds and arm bars and went from usually feeling like prey in the world to uh, accessing the predator side. Good for you. And yeah, yeah. totally different frequency. And, and like, and it, I could feel often I would go to a, a class and I would cry out something and I'm like, I'm crying out my attachment to my mom's patterns Mm -hmm. and finding the real essence of who I am Mm -hmm. and, and finding my masculine side and finding my protector side and the part of me that can say no. And the part of me that protects my daughter and Mm -hmm. all, you know, all of that's there. And so it's taking me past being my parents' kid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we say I'm a victim to this, because of my parents, you're still being raised by your parents then. And there's a point where we got to take the reins and learn to have this higher expansive voice. Because every time I listen, it gives me an idea that's worth a ton of money. It gives me the next step. It gives me higher levels of health. It gets me boundary. Like I did it, you know, I'm doing like a a one-on-one workout with my trainer followed by one or two jujitsus. But like there's it's boundaryless how much I can do if I don't think of myself as the old program because Windows 95 can't do as much as what I am. But when you're when you identify as God's kid and you stop being the limitations or even having blame or giving them any more like we love them, we bring love to them, but you just came through them and mm. you're not their kid. Mm. You're not their egoic patterns kid. You're not their fears. And it's up to us to really hear that, not just because it feels good, but like to live in the realm of if you are God's kid directly and you're just talking to God like it's your parents and like, what do you want? It gives me this expansive thing. It frees all fear. Mm. Mm. It it frees the addictions that numb fear. And like, so yeah, so this came through in a meditation I was doing on my membership site with my audience. And then I came out of it and spontaneously heard God say, announce, like, do you're doing an event Mm -hmm. that'll help people access their true self Mm -hmm. and undo themselves from the realm of the limitations of like your money issue, because your dad taught you this. You're not his kid. (laughs) (laughs) And I think there's a ton of self-help that offers shadow work and we transcend our traumas, but we still stay the Windows 95 that keeps them. So it's like you do enough work at certain courses, but you still identify as the old thing. And if you want to really transcend it, you just connect to the truth of what you are and watch it go. This pattern no longer serves you this pattern. And just, you'll be freeing yourself and doing really powerful things and contributing to the world in a new way while at the same time, uh, purging the old software that's no longer needed through love, through unconditional acceptance, but you can't purge third grade until you go into fourth grade. You can't purge third grade and stay in third grade. And I think that's the level of shadow work we've gotten to is like getting some patterns out, but then still living within the realm of the, of the software. And um, so I'm doing a a three-day live streamed event 
that's free for everyone that's a member on my membership site. And there's an early bird price of $99 for the three days. I have expenses, I have to pay the crew and everything. This event, I'm telling you, will change the real aspect of yourself. Mm. Move you in something so big, we're going to combine listening to God and then following these things. Mm. Thank, Thank you and having basically almost like a funeral for the patterns that are no longer you. And then creating a plan to make sure this happens. This, it's like, this will cost so much more to not do it because we live in the patterns and we do the addictive things and, you know, keep paying for beer and restaurants and all these other things that aren't our highest. And it's like giving you this freedom to access the truth of what you are. Mm. So, you know, we have on my membership site also thousand, literally over a thousand hours of past events. And I do live calls several times a week and there's thousands of people on it. That's that, by the way, is a thing that's $7.95 for a year, but right now we're doing $2.99 for a year. So if they want a year of like me live on Sunday, doing a guided meditation, me Wednesday, bringing people into the hot seat, everything, get the absolutely everything pass right now. The biggest thing I hear about it is it's so much more expensive to not have it. Mm-hmm. Kyle, do you know, do you happen to know when that sale is over? Because I want to align this with when it's going to drop. Yes. So the two ninety five for a year on the membership site will end September 30th. Okay, great. So this will drop before then. So just get yes. in there. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, awesome. And they, we could have a password for even if it's after that, I think too, where we just put your last name in. Okay. Like we just say, if, they, if the password's Sorrow, if they if they put that in, we'll give them the two ninety five awesome. or two ninety nine. Yeah. And and so that my listeners are clear, I'm not an affiliate at all. There's no payout to me. There's no. This is this is a this is a smoking deal. You're hearing you know, you're hearing the transmission. It's very clear the potency of what's possible. And what's so cool, Kyle, uh, for anyone who is, you know, like, yes, snag my soul. That's for me, which I'd say, yes, go do it. Don't they get this two day event on God's kid as a member? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's free. for yeah. So you basically just saved another hundred dollars. And we, we I mean, are going to have, <laughs> a, we'll probably also have like literally they can do hot seat, like where we have a thing called hot seat once a week where I'll bring someone on and shift yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and then even if you're just watching it, you shift so many things. We have Wednesday night, I do a ton of live calls. We shift people on that. Sunday, we do a guided meditation. There's two other courses on there that other teammates do called It's Totally Possible. They have at six days a week, there's a live thing. Ah, oh my gosh, for basically $199. I mean, that's essentially the price point for a year. And then all of the content in the vault. Yes. Um, I've ne- I haven't been this excited about my listeners to delve into your work in a very long time, although many are very familiar with you. But what's cool is that everything that I was learning and evolving uh, through because of you came from the free content on YouTube. Mm. So imagine y'all, right? Like, dedicate ourselves just a little bit more deeply. Um, I know we're beginning to wrap, but I want to just kind of piggyback on my original statement and or remark around God's kid and like thinking, Ooh, but is that advanced? Actually, what was coming to me as you were sharing, because I was listening to that latest video while, you know, getting ready for this conversation. Um, And so as I'm able to be even more present now, I realize that is very indicative of what is happening in the ascension, right? As we are moving as a collective into the fourth density, mm-hmm. you don't have to be so concerned about the shadow work. That right. is from the old paradigm. And by the way, that's only a small percentage of the old self-help, right? Because the old self-help is just to overcome, which does right. not serve anyone in our highest and best. Well, but only an ego could people... overcome, right? Wait, what did you say? I said only an ego can overcome something like it's over a hurdle and think of what you're getting over. Like just (laughs) or like if I'm trying to get over my daughter, I think I'd be abusive. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, right. Like like the poor pattern that you're getting rid of and figuring out and overcoming. Now picture that patterns, your child and the child says, I'm sad. And you're like, how do I get over you? How do I get rid of you? How do I what the child needs is for you to see the child. And so what we're trying to get over is our inner child. And so we're just continually shaming it in that energy. Right. So when we're just like 
uh, walk around with me. Like you can be here. Hey, codependent pattern who protected me and got me here. Hey, avoidant pattern or warrior or, you know, yeah. pattern. Thank you for protecting me from mom or dad a long time ago. Yes. Yes. And it when I, right yeah. out and it's permanently gone. I love that. Yeah. We just dissolve it into our beingness, you know, into the now moment. I, my favorite thing that you say, um, and it's not lost on me that we are recording the night before a full moon in Aquarius, deep release, emotional processes, right? Like it's so perfect. But one of my, you said it here. I'm like, he said it. Um, the now is so much more profound than anything I could have ever planned. Yes. This is my life. And, 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 you can't convince anyone to get here. You just kind of model it, right? Just model it, model it, model it, share it, you know, not expecting anyone to, you know, to take it on as their new way of being, but, but there's such truth and deep resonance there. And so now even when people like I was on a river rafting trip this past weekend, and it was a whole bunch of Tony Robbins people, right? Like all, and, and they're my friends and I love them. And we have a lot in common from, you know, days, years back. But um, they were like, so Michelle, what's the five-year plan? We're like cruising down the river. Love y'all. If you guys hear this, no shade. Um, and it was just like, I'm here. Yes. I'm in nature. The river is carrying us, right? Yeah. I'm being held. I'm in a raft with kids and we're laughing. And that's all I know. I know that there are some other things that require logistics, but I don't know how to plan for the future anymore. Yes. Right. But what I know is that everything is in divine order and it's beyond my known imagination. Right. Like if I just allow I'm getting the divine tingles again, which is always my team saying, yes, 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 girl. But like this is it anyway. So it's just so yeah. fun to drop in with someone who gets this that I now get to because you help me get it. Like, Kyle, I'm such a full circle moment with you, man. I'm <laughs> I'm so happy to meet you and know you exist and see that because it can, even though those are just moments of lies too, but it can feel lonely when you start to see this level. Very. But yeah, I, I, I will just offer, you know, we have in our live events, so many profound, bizarre, miraculous moments that happen mm. that we, sometimes people go, there's, you must've planted that in the audience that, that, that person that's a setup, never, ever, ever have we ever done that. Mm -hmm. And that's because I know that the now is capable of much more miracles mm -hmm. than anything my ego can plan. Mm -hmm. And planning something requires a timeline, but our consciousness is too high now. It's like you're planning everything that's in the first floor of a building, but you don't get that you're being picked up by an elevator now. Mm -hmm. So you kind of can't. Mm -hmm. And the amount of times that I'll be like, oh, what are we doing next week with this or whatever? I'm like, do you know much new information is going to happen. <laughs> I'm not even the same person I was yesterday. Yes, I, I get know. it. Same yeah. here. And yeah. and you really transcend things quickly when you just are in surrender to the now. You still make a decision every once in a while, but your future and the way to do it isn't your God. Your, you know, this is the plan isn't like that becomes more your God than God. And I, you know, the biggest answer I have for almost everything is I don't know. And yes. I'm sure Times that can be frustrating, but at the same time, that's the truth. The biggest truth on the planet that we all have is I don't know. I love it. When we embrace that and stop filling it with this denialism, you, you won't believe what you can access when you fall in love with the knowing that your ego does not know because God is so much more miraculous than anything your ego can plan, which is trying to plan out of security anyway, because it's underlying belief is it's not secure. So <laughs> instead of keeping that going and coming up with a fake plan to deny that, like, just fall in love with, I don't know, move moment to moment. That's the universe, you know? Yeah. So beautifully put, there's so much context in there, but you know, we've been on some deep dives here on fire and soul. So I have a feeling there's, I'm feeling into the resonance right now. It's just beautiful weaving that we have co-created Kyle. Um, my last question for you, really, and I just thought of it in this moment is, what is your experience of God? You know, it's hard to say, how would you describe or, you know, but what is your interpretation? Um, and I'll just leave it at that because it could come in a myriad of different answers. Well, I have to experience God firsthand versus being told about God or reading about God. Like, 
like through okay. meditating a lot, I just notice one thing that's for sure is that when I listen to silence more, every issue that I have in my life starts to come up, but then passes. And I notice that circumstances that we usually make our God by saying this could happen or this could happen, they pass. They're like clouds and you start to be the sky. I have a thing I call, which by the way, will probably be another event I'll do. That'll be a three-day streaming event near the end of January. It's called Breakup Single Soulmate. And I'll explain. Oh, that. I love it. Oh, I love it on the title. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In, whenever you meditate, I find the first half an hour is the break off of an egoic construct. So it's always very painful at first mm -hmm. because everything you thought you were, everything you had identified as the truth starts to kind of break off. So people, when they meditate and they start, they usually don't want to keep going because that it's stuff falling apart and the mind goes crazy. And after 30 minutes, I find that from 30 to 45 minutes, it's almost like that broke off and it's kind of just free. It doesn't know what to do here, mm -hmm. which is fine. And I just know to keep going mm -hmm. around 45, 46 minutes. It's almost like now that the clouds have cleared mm -hmm. the direct connection to really big next steps in your life, mm -hmm. unbelievable worthiness, mm -hmm. total freedom, everything is on the other side. So it's like your soulmate comes in and carries you on the other side. And I find that it's very hard to access that with like 20 minute meditations. It's when I really go at least an hour uninterrupted. Mm -hmm. And I find that there's no way that I'm any of these constructs or even the idea of the body or the story of the trauma. So I must be more merged with that higher energy. And I'm still in discovery of what what God is. All I know is all the things that I'm not. I'm not any story. I'm not anything you could follow with. I am <laughs> like, yes, yes, totally. Uh, there it is. I am. That's God. Yeah. Right. And it's, and it's deepening and it's, it's sublime. It's euphoric bliss, you know, but these are just words like really it's, it's just, yeah, yeah it's a state. It's a state. Yeah, it sounds nuts if if it's not experienced. It's just like what? <laughs> that, like people hear that and they'll, you know what I hear the biggest objection is always that's great Kyle, but I live in a real world. There you go. The real world to people is where they think about things that could go wrong in the future and then come up with a solution, but that's fantasy. Mm -hmm. You're thinking of what could go wrong in another time. To me, real is what's here now. Mm -hmm. What's in the space? There's there's a billion dollar idea sitting right here. There's total freedom for the planet. There's healing. There's alchemizing. There's the dark forces come to light completely in these spaces here. Mm -hmm. And so when I just listen, I just listen. And you, the ego looks for a tangible thing. And you got to just understand that it's it's downloading stuff even when you don't mentally understand it. And, and after an hour, you're a different human being. You make different decisions. You save money because you're not doing addictive things. You, totally. you don't get into bad things. You don't say yes when you mean no. Like you really undo yourself from the world and your old egoic construct the second you you know, really merge with the truth of what you are. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, so beautifully said. It reminds me when you made that reference of when people say, yeah, easy for you, Kyle. I live in the real world. It was like the divine law of as above, so below, as within, you know, as without. Like I didn't, I, I heard that, I spouted that, I taught it. But yeah. until I actually knew it, Yeah. right? I live in LA, it's a lot of mask, right? And I see through that and I have compassion but at the same time, I can see where I was doing that. And yeah. I'm like, wow, this is actually really real. This is not woo woo wee. Like, and even though I drank the Kool Aid, I made the Kool Aid, right? Like for decades. Yes. But, but I didn't actually know what was in the Kool Aid. Yes. Until now. And yes. so this is why it's like, this is the new earth. I don't even want to say mentality, reality, consciousness. Yes. Like, this is where we are. I don't even say headed. This is where we be. And, and we are linking up energetically, like in person, in, you know, not virtually, whatever we, our souls are finding one another and we are modeling what's possible on that pathway. Mm -hmm. And the more that we band together, the more that we show others, you can be courageous. And then you don't even need courage because that, that in, in, implies, you know, fear to overcome something. Then you just surrender. Yes. 
And, and I'm getting, I always, they always communicating with me, my team, but it's like the full body tingle. Sometimes it's like, okay, I'm trying to talk, but then I just have to acknowledge it out loud, but such a deep um, field uh, with you. Thank you for this. Is there anything that you wish I would have asked or that you feel compelled to share as we, as we close out? No, I would just say if they want to go to the God's Kid course, they can go to kylecease.com slash God's Kid. If they would like to get the absolutely everything pass and, and be immersed in this for a while and really see how different the life is that you had, like people, it's changing their lives. Uh, you could go to absolutely everything.tv. Mm. and uh or kylecease.com you can find it there and i'd love to work with people and collaborate and hear what god wants to do and just create major change now yeah that's it beautifully said well i will link all of that in the show notes and um, i'm pretty certain i'll be joining anyone who listens to fire and soul uh there uh, mm. so what a beautiful aligned offer that so um just perfect. Thank you so much for this, this time. Thank you. You're amazing. You were an amazing host and you collaborated so well and congrats on being the real thing. It's beautiful. Ah, oh, I receive. Thank you. And likewise. Yeah.